I'm going to talk you through teaching multiplication so neither of you end up in a puddle of tears at the end of the day and so your kids remember it because that's what you want. You want your kids to remember their multiplication facts. So let's break down what understanding a math fact really looks like and there is a traditional four stages to this. The first one being conceptual understanding. This is the stage where they are beginning to work out how the actual operation works. Three candies to three bags and how this would play out in an equation. It's a story problem where they are seeing how the numbers are related to each other. In this stage, they aren't solving the problems yet, like at all. They don't have to figure out that three candies and three bags equals nine, right? Three times three is nine, right? They're not necessarily solving the problem. They are figuring out how the numbers are working in relation to each other. Second stage is counting strategies. This is where they're using manipulatives to find the answer. They're actually playing out the problem in real time and actually counting them out individually. This is the time to really step up skip counting and really practicing skip counting because eventually you want them to transition away from counting individually to counting in groups. Once you practice that skip counting, you can point out different patterns that numbers do when you are counting in groups. So like odds, evens, sometimes there's repeat numbers and pointing those out is going to make skip counting a little bit more intuitive and help them conceptually understand what they are doing in their equation. Third stage is a reasoning strategy. They begin to reason out what the math facts are based on math facts that they already know. And so if they've already memorized their tens, 10 times two gives them 20, then they'll be able to reason out what nine times two equals 18 because you're taking two away. And they know because they have been practicing skip counting numbers and they also know conceptually because they have seen how the numbers have been grouped. Eventually, after practicing that, after skip counting and then pulling from math facts they already know, they're going to get to fact mastery where they can pull any multiplication equation and they know it. So let's say that your kid is struggling between stages three and four. They know some of their math facts, like they know their fives, they know their tens, they know their twos, they know their ones, and they're struggling transitioning to fact mastery where they know all of the facts in between those. A really good and helpful way is keeping track of numbers for them. For instance, if they're trying to figure out what eight times two is, you say, okay, well, you know that 10 times two is 20. So what's nine times two? You take two away from 20, that gives you 18. Nine times two is 18. You're trying to find out what eight times two is. So hold, I'll hold on to 18, you take two more away, that gives you 16. If they feel like they can trust you to hold on to a number for them, they'll feel more comfortable and confident in doing some relationship math in their mind because they know mom is holding on to it. Some kids might resist, by saying, you know, I can do it, I can do it, give them the space to do it, but also be willing to say, I can hold a number for you. And if they don't necessarily have you by them si their side, allow them to write down numbers on a board, on a scrap piece of paper. Keeping track of those numbers is what's usually so frustrating for beginning multipliers because they are losing track of numbers that they're trying to work out. So let's talk about word problems. Sometimes kids struggle with word problems, but understand math facts all day. You give them the math fact and they can spout it out really quickly. It's incorporating language into math. And the reason why word problems are beneficial, it's applying real life situations to math facts. Not all the time because we don't always, you know, have two shopping carts filled with 10 watermelons. Starts filling her fresh cart with a mountain of gold wrap. Word problems can also be exceptionally difficult because you're pulling multiple skills. You need to be able to be a competent reader. You need to be able to pick out and sort through information that is useful and that is not. And for a lot of kids, that's difficult to navigate. Practice, that's just practice. And it's also a skill that is worth practicing. Slow and steady wins the race. While I was researching for this video, I came across several studies about cram sessions. So what ends up happening is that students will cram in as much of the information as possible and then do really well on the final test. But then if they're tested on that material again a week later, they only do sort of okay. And then if it's several months later, they don't remember any of the facts that they had learned 
in that cram session. The same thing can be said with multiplication, flashcards, those worksheets where you are doing repetitive problems over and over and over again will give you short-term success and you'll feel like, oh, they really got it, but it's not going to be retained. It will dissipate over time. And there's other, you know, tricks like songs and I have nothing against these, but long-term, they do dissipate over time because conceptually they do not understand how the problem works. So what do you do? Between the stages of three and four, you're going to want to be practicing for 10 minutes, five problems. That's two minutes per problem. And they're going to be pulling from skip counting. They're going to be using other math facts that they know to figure out the answers for those five problems. Eventually, they're going to get so fast that they're going to cruise through those five problems in 10 minutes. Go ahead, add a couple more, but do not increase the time period. 10 minutes. If they can't get through all the problems in 10 minutes, that's okay. The end goal is not speed. The end goal is stamping memory. And with this in mind, children don't learn their multiplication facts in one month. They just don't. Maybe they can spout them out verbatim to you easily and you're like, ha ha, they got it. It's only one month. They need to be continually practicing that for a full year before it just becomes a part of who they are. One of our favorite things to do with skip counting is get our big 100 chart out and they literally hop from number to number and that's how they do practice their skip counting and that's how I have taught all of my kids multiplication. And the physical movement is phenomenal. It's so great and it really helps solidify a lot of our math facts. But the company stopped making it so <laughs> I can't recommend it anymore because they don't make it anymore. But I know I've seen other 100 charts like this where you physically move move or you play with. And so if you have one of those in your homeschool, comment down below and I'd love to see what you use in your home for as far as like 100 charts. Because I've seen several and they're very clever. What really helps with long-term memory is gameplay or world play. When you're practicing it with real life world scenarios, it's exciting and it impresses the necessity of knowing and understanding your math facts. And in this video here, I have seven games that we use to retain our math facts and our fluent with that. So I'd check that video out next.